Air dry clay is an absolute favorite of mine and a great way to create sculptures at home. For this unit, I looked at animals from the Chinese zodiac, mine being the rooster. So I thought it would be great to give the rooster a go. The first thing I did was to look up some really interesting pictures of roosters on the internet. I was looking for a bird with lots of feathers and a variety of colors. So I set about trying to create my plan using pencil and watercolour paint. I love watercolour paint because the colours blend and bleed easily into each other. Over the years I've tried a variety of different air dry clays and the Amos clay is the best for me. It doesn't tend to crack and it has a nice consistency. It's a little more expensive than others, but I think it's worth the additional cost. As I've only allowed one packet of air dry clay for this particular piece, I've got to be mindful of exactly how much I use. So I want to make sure that I have enough for the feathers at the end. If I find myself running out of clay, I can always squish it up and start again. One of the great things about using air dry clay at home is that it's not too messy. So as you can see here, I'm using it on the table and I'm using scissors and I'm using a couple of kitchen utensils to create some effects. When you have finished creating your sculpture, you need to put it aside to dry out. I tend to leave them overnight, but longer is better. If you leave it near a window or a dehumidifier or an air conditioning unit, it will dry quicker. But make sure each side dries as well. So you might need to turn your sculpture over during the drying process. When your sculpture is dry, you are ready to paint. Usually I paint my air dry sculptures using acrylic paint. But I wanted to explore how watercolour paint would work, as this is what many of us have at home. Watercolour paint works really well and can be painted directly onto the air dry clay. If I was using acrylic paint, I would usually pop a layer or two of gesso first. But I'm not using it this time and it seems to have worked really well without it. I have kept to the colours I used in my original plan. Now as yellow, red and orange were used a lot, I tried to complete all those areas first. Change your water regularly to keep your brush nice and clean, but use your blues, greens, purples and particularly blacks last. Watercolour paints blend really well together so you can easily mix colours creating a variety of different hues. And many watercolour sets come with liquid white paint which you can use to clear over those areas where your brush might have hit accidentally or you can mix it with the colours that you've got to mute the colours and create some pastels. Don't be afraid to use a couple of coats of paint. This will intensify your color dramatically. I also encourage you to use black last and to paint it on dry paint. Black tends to mix and muddy colors if it is painted on wet paint. Luckily watercolour can be washed off quite easily if you do make a mistake, so don't be afraid to just try. Once you have finished painting, set this aside to dry. You might want to finish it off with a varnish, but just check and make sure that that varnish works well with watercolour paint. My rooster guy is almost done and the colours look as vibrant as the original drawing. Enjoy your journey. <laughs>